Okay, so in the previous class we started the discussion on the call money market. So already what uh, we defined uh, that call money market is a short term money market where the uh, particular instruments which are available their maturity period varies from 1 day to uh, 15 days and if you consider the overall money market maybe the uh, maturity period is relatively longer. Uh, and here already also we have discussed the call money market is also defined as the interbank lending market because the banks and primary dealers are only responsible or may be the major participants in this particular segment or they are only allowed to participate in the segment and apart from the banks there are some standalone primary dealers who are also allowed to participate in this particular system. Today we will be discussing about certain issues related to the call money rate and how the call money rates are determined and as well as what are those factors which determine this call money rates or why the call money rates are relatively volatile and apart from the call money market is there any other uh, market which is related to this uh, interbank lending market but that still is different from the call money market which we are uh, we have discussed in the previous class. So, coming back to this uh, discussion if you see uh, the rate of interest which is uh, paid on the particular call loans these are basically called as the call rate uh, or the call money rate uh, in short we call it the call rate. And if you see that uh, the call rates are highly fluctuating or highly volatile it varies from uh, day to day or it is highly variable from day to day or often from one hour to another hour. And it is very sensitive to the changes in the demand for and supply of the call loans. So, already uh, what basically here uh, I was trying to tell you that uh, the call money rate is market determined. It is market determined that means, this there is no such kind of uh, uh, regulatory body who decides this call money rate. The call money rate is always sensitive towards the policy rates, sensitive towards the policy rate. And what do we mean by the policy rate? In the Indian context we always already we have discussed this part, our policy rate is the repo rate. So, if Reserve Bank of India will change the repo rate and the change in the repo rate will have the implication on the call money rate because the intermediate target for the monetary policy is the call money rate. If you remember that uh, whenever we are discussing about the corridor, so here we have a corridor here in the floor we have the reverse repo rate, we have the reverse repo rate. Then here we have the repo rate and we have the MSF rate or the marginal standing facility rate. And what we have discussed that the, the call money rate should vary here that means, it should be less than the MSF rate. And the corridor has to be maintained to maintain the price stability, to maintain the price stability. So, if any kind of extra money what the banks required, if they will go and borrow this money from Reserve Bank of India, then it will increase or decrease the uh, money supply in the system. If they will go borrowing more money, then it will increase the money supply in the system by that the price level will increase, the price level will increase. But if you go by, if the MSF rate will be lesser than the MSF rate will be less than this then they will go to RBI, but the MSF rate will be more than the call money rate then the borrowings will be done from the interbank lending market. By that what is happening that the amount of money supply in the system becomes stable or becomes same. So, that is why the price level will be stable. So, that is why uh, it is very much sensitive towards the changes in the demand for and supply of the call loans which are basically done by the commercial banks or the primary dealers. 
So, this is uh, basically determined by previously the call money rate was determined by the regulator, but uh, since uh, 1989 the call rate is freely determined by the market forces that already we have discussed. And mostly the call rate in India is defined as the interbank call rate because it is a interbank lending market we call it the interbank call rate in the context of India whenever we discuss about the call money market. Then uh, if you see that uh, already I told you that the call rates are highly volatile. It is one of the highest volatile market which exists in the Indian financial system. Why the call rates are highly volatile? Already we told that the call rates are highly volatile because the demand and supply of the call loans change frequently. The demand and supply of the call loans if they will change frequently then automatically what is happening the call rate or the interest rate on the call money market also is going to be changed. And how it is possible? I mean why basically the demand for call loans and supply of the call loans change? What is the reason behind that? The first point is uh, is basically what already we have seen that that is your CRR requirements. Whenever the CRR requirements increases, the requirement of cash reserve ratio increases that creates the excess demand for liquidity in the call money market. So, for example, if your CRR will increase or cash reserve ratio will increase then the bank will need more money because to fulfill that CR, uh, CRR uh, requirement because there is a if they will not maintain the CRR because that is a regulatory norm. So, that is why that is a regulatory cost involved in that. So, to avoid that regulatory cost the bank always will be interested to maintain that CRR. If CRR will increase then obviously, the demand for the demand for call loans will increase the demand for call loans will increase. So, obviously, the bank will try to borrow that particular required amount of money from another commercial bank within that particular call money market. So, that is the uh, one of the most important reasons for which uh, the demand for call loans basically fluctuates. This is number one. Number two over extended credit position of the banks. What does it mean? already we know that the banks basically provide the loans or the credits from the deposits. The deposit is the only source through which the loans or the credit can be given, but at a certain point of time some of the banks may provide more credit than the stipulated availability of the deposits whatever they have. If the credit amount is relatively higher and in that particular point of time again all of sudden there is some kind of CRR requirements are changed then obviously, the dependency of the call money market will increase or we can say that the demand for call loans will increase or the bank can also borrow from the call money market to provide that amount of loan to certain kind of uh, customers whether they are the industrial for the industrial uh, loans or it may be for the other type of loans what they have they wanted to give. So, to provide the more loans they sometimes depend on the call money market because they do not have enough deposit base available with them to provide that amount of loan if there is a demand for loan at that particular point of time. That is basically the another reason. So, that is why the demand for uh, call loans and the supply of call loans both are basically determined by the the credit position over extended credit position of the commercial banks. Then we have the occasional market disruptions there may be some kind of disturbances which can happen in the market. So, if uh, may be this particular disruptions are very short term in nature as you know that the call money market is also in a, is a short term market. So, any kind of market disruptions also will affect uh, both the demand and supply of the call loans. So, in that particular point of time the availability of the or the requirement of the money in the call money market change. Heavy withdrawal by the institutional investors. You see that whenever uh, anybody keeps the money in the bank they are the every right to 
uh, would draw the money. For some specific reasons, if the larger depositors or larger investors have withdrawn that particular money in a single day or for some specific reason this uh, withdrawal amount has increased, then also to uh, make this or to manage this short term liabilities or short term uh, uh, asset liability concept, the commercial banks wants to borrow the money. Because they have made the calculations that how much money can be withdrawn. The reserve requirements, the reserve requirements are basically already defined. The short term reserve requirements are already defined. So, if the short term reserve requirements are already defined or how much liquidity is there with the bank which can be kept as excess reserve to fulfill the customer's demand that is already defined but that has been predicted or forecasted before. But for some reason, if the institutional investors have heavily withdrawn the money, then the availability of the deposit or availability of the money to the commercial bank declines to fulfill the requirement of the customer or to fulfillment of the liquidity requirements. So, at that particular point of time, for short term reason, they want to borrow from the call money market. So, that is why the call money demand or the demand for call loans basically can increase. Then we have another reason we have liquidity crisis in the money market. The liquidity crisis means if let there is a very less money supply in the system, money supply have uh, less liquidity uh, because of uh, uh, availability of the money in the market is less. So, in that particular point of time what will happen this uh, reserve bank of India or the regulator will change the interest rate. So, the change in interest rate will have impact on the lending rates because the policy rate will change. If the policy rate will change automatically the lending rates will be affected. If the lending rates will be affected accordingly your demand for money will be affected. So, if the demand for money will be affected automatically the demand for call loans also will be affected. So, that is basically we call it the liquidity crisis in the money market that may lead to the fluctuations of the call loans, the demand for call loans or the supply of call loans in the particular system. Then another reason if you see that the sluggish demand in bank deposit with heavy pressure for non food credit in the banking sector. So, there are two types of uh, credit what the banks give, one is your food credits which were given to buy the or procure the food grains and another one the non food credit which includes uh, different type of uh, credit requirements like industrial loans, personal loans, then you have housing loans, all kind of vehicle, all kind of things are coming under the non-food credit. So, uh, what is happening that if the demand for deposit is relatively less, but there is a huge pressure on the this kind of loans in the market, which basically makes the mismatch between asset and liabilities. The uh, bank deposit is less, but the demand for loans are higher. So, either in the market the opportunities are more that is why the industrial sector demand more loans or the uh, market is conducive which is creating better investment opportunity that is why these investors or people are interested to go for more loans. So, in that particular point of time what is happening that creates a clear mismatch between assets and liabilities that mismatch between asset and liabilities also uh, led the banks to go for more uh, loans from the call money market. So, they can borrow the money from the call money market to cater the demand for the non food credit uh, uh, which are existing in the system that particular in that particular point of time. So, that is why that is another reason which makes the changes in the demand and supply of the call loans. Then already you know that uh, we have uh, all the markets are interlinked uh, money market, stock market, foreign exchange market these are interlinked. If any changes which can happen in the exchange rate market for example, this uh, rupee is depreciating against a dollar or uh, RBI wants to intervene to control that particular price fluctuations in the exchange rate market. So, that particular uh, intervention in the foreign exchange market will affect the total aggregate money supply. 
if the total aggregate money supply gets affected then automatically what will happen it will have the impact upon the call money rate why because the market interest rate will be changed so any kind of changes any kind of fluctuations in the foreign exchange market or it can be in the stock market both the markets if there is any kind of changes which can happen so that has a spillover effect on the demand for call loans and supply of call loans because there is a interlinkage the markets are highly integrated so any disruptions any major changes which may occur in one of the markets that can transmit to the other markets then obviously the interest rate which is prevailing in that particular market gets affected by that so that's why any kind of causality because there is a causality so the demand and supply also changes accordingly for the call loans also changes accordingly then you have the structural deficiencies in the banking sector so if there is any kind of structural deficiency which happens in the banking sector to fulfill that particular deficiency the commercial banks can go and borrow the money from the call money market because that particular market is exclusively uh, relevant or may be allowed to the commercial banks to borrow and lend so then whenever this any kind of deficiency occurs in the banking sector so one bank always relies upon another bank to get that particular financing to get rid of this kind of deficiency which may occur in a short period of time so these are the major issues or major factors or major reasons what we can say these are affecting the demand and supply of the call loans demand for and supply of the call loans and once the demand for and supply of call loans change accordingly that will change the call money rate or the interest rate which prevails in the call money market so that's why the call rates are relatively highly volatile i can give you a figure that in some year the average call money rate was even 80% that was in 2007 so the rate was quite high already i told you there are various reasons behind that the weighted average call money rate in 2007 was 80% if you go back to and analyze the year 2007 data you have lot of analysis in terms of the crisis and all these things if you consider those kind of factors the call money rate was uh, as highly has been highly affected by those kind of changes which have occurred in the economic system as a whole so these are the major reasons which basically affect the uh, call uh, demand for call loans and supply of the call loans and by that the call money rates uh, become volatile then there are certain measures what uh, rbi always takes to reduce the call rate volatility how far it was effective that is a separate question but there are certain measures which have been uh, taken uh, the discount finance house intervention uh, has increased uh, for reduce, discounting this particular finance which are available in the system more funds have been channelized by rbi through dfhi funds are channelized by certain financial institutions with surplus funds penalties on crr shortfalls are shorten previously whatever penalty the banks were paying in a particular stipulated point of time if they have not maintained the crr that particular penalty uh, it has been a little bit uh, shorten uh, if this particular bank shortfalls for the crr requirements liquidity adjustment facility was introduced uh, in 2000 to manage the short term liquidity to maintain the stability in the money market intra bank liabilities were free from the reserve requirements in 1997 so these are uh, some of the measures what rbi has taken to make this particular market more stable but if you in the real sense if you see because it is a market determined uh, interest rate or the demand and supply also driven by so many exogenous factors so because of that what in practical sense we have observed that the call money rate, call money market is highly volatile or the interest rate in the call money market changes very frequently in a, the frequency of the change uh, in that particular market is quite large so this is what basically what in practical sense we have observed but still the regulators always try to take certain steps certain measures to reduce that kind of uh, volatility in the market because already we know that the volatility leads to instability any kind of threshold limit if volatility crosses then we can say that the market become unstable 
So, to get rid of the concept of or to remove the probability of instability in the market, they always ensure that the call money rates should be volatile because it is a market determined factor, but the volatility should be within a range. So, then uh, if you see that uh, there are certain uh, measure rates uh, which are available in the system, which always we use as the benchmark rates which are available in the call money market. We have uh, a rate called Mumbai interbank bid rate because call money market also is determined by the location. We have call money market in Mumbai, we have, we have Kolkata, we have Ahmedabad. So, those kind of place, but the prominent market is in Mumbai because most of the corporate uh, sorry uh, the banks head offices are uh, situated in Mumbai. Mostly because uh, of that the Mumbai interbank bid rate and Mumbai interbank offer rate, these are the prominent rates which are always we use whenever we go for the call money market. It is the interest rate at which banks can borrow the funds in marketable size from other banks in the Indian interbank market and it is calculated by the National Stock Exchange of India NSE. And how the NSE calculates this one? It is basically calculated on the basis of uh, the data collected from the 30 banks and the primary dealers. And the, they have a mix of public sector banks including SBI, uh, Central, uh, is, uh, uh, there is another bank called CBI Central Bank of India, private sector banks including Axis Bank, HDFC Bank, foreign banks including City Bank, Dutch Bank, ICICI Securities Limited, PNB Guild Limited which are considered as the stand alone uh, uh, primary dealers which are existing in India. So, here what is happening all the rates which are um, charged by this, 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 these entities they collect those data and try to find out the weighted average of the particular interbank lending rate or the Mumbai interbank rate in a uh, particular time gap. So, that is why uh, this is basically a weighted rate which is calculated on the basis of the uh, interest rate charged by these kind of entities which are participating in this particular system. So, that is why we can say that this is a uh, benchmark rate or maybe the proxy for the call money market uh, whenever we analyze uh, for any kind of reasons, uh, then we consider this Mumbai interbank rate or the Mumbai interbank offer rate as a proxy for the call, mar call money market interest rate in the system. So, that is uh, one of the major uh, proxies or major interest rate which uh, has been prevailed in the call money market in the Indian financial system. Uh, then we have uh, there are some other uh, uh, rates which are globally available always we use in our analysis in the research or this is always considered as a proxy for the international interest rate. So, that is basically called the LIBOR rate you might have heard about this rate again and again that uh, this is the interest rate basically which banks can borrow funds from marketable size from other banks in the London interbank market. Here we have a Mumbai interbank and whenever we talk about the international market we consider the LIBOR which is basically the London interbank market and this is a highly acceptable rate across the uh, globe and whenever we talk about any floating rate interest in the global scenario always it is calculated with reference to the LIBOR. Or whenever we do any research, we try to collect data in terms of any foreign lending rate or foreign interest rate, we always consider LIBOR is the first one. Because if you see any kind of uh, in the derivatives, we will discuss that whenever you go for the swap and all these things, the floating rates always interest uh, floating interest rate is always calculated LIBOR plus 0 0.5 percent, LIBOR minus 0 0.5 percent like that. So, LIBOR is a very popular rate which is used internationally as a uh, interest rate short term interest rate which prevails in the market. And the LIBOR is fixed on a daily basis by the British Bankers Association. So, every uh, day you can get the data for the uh, LIBOR in that particular market and that data is nothing but the call money market in, in, in London or in UK. Uh, it basically measures the cost of the interbank lending and setting out the average rate banks pay to borrow from one another. So, this is the average rate, this is not like our Mumbai interbank lending rate which is or weighted average of call money rate. So, this is basically a 
uh, weighted rate or the average rate which shows that in a particular day how much interested the call money market in UK uh, uh, is and as well as uh, whether the rate is uh, how much fluctuations in comparison to the different rates at different days that you can always judge from the LIBOR rate fluctu fluctuations in the UK market. That is why oh, it is a very uh, popular uh, interest rate which uh, prevails in the system uh, that is why always we should have some idea about the uh, LIBOR rates in uh, whenever we discuss about the call money market. Then apart from the call money market, we have uh, another two major markets which are related to this call money market, but not relatively it is different in the call money in, in, uh, in comparison to the call money market is it is again uh, a rate which is or the market which uh, deals with the particular assets where turn to maturity is relatively larger or higher or the longer, longer term maturity assets which are traded in this particular segment, these are the term money market and repo market. We were discussing about the call money market where the term to maturity was varying between day 1 to day 15 from 1 day to 15 days, where whenever you talk about the term money market and repo market, little bit these are two different markets and here the transactions so the term to maturity is from 15 days to 1 year. In the term money market, the tenure of the transactions is from 15 days to 1 year and the repo market uh, in uh, already we discussed about the repo rate and reverse repo rate, but if you see that uh, in, in RBI context uh, repo market are two types, one is repo under LF liquidity adjustment facility and outside LF repo outside LF. So, here this repo market I am talking about repo outside LF. So, the repo market the repo rate which is decided by RBI this is basically what this is basically a short term liquidity management and this is a major instrument for the monetary policy. But outside LF also we have another repo market which uh, basically always used to finance the money to the different financial institutions in the market and that repo is basically varying it is not specific to a particular organization, it can vary from one particular entity to another entity, one time period to another time period, but still that provision is there that there is outside repo market where the borrowings can be possible by one entity, but one organization and this fixations of the interest rate can be done by the Reserve Bank of India. Already you know that repo contract is an instrument for borrowing funds by selling the securities with an agreement, agreement to repurchase the said securities on a mutually agreed future date or at an agreed price which includes the interest rate for the funds borrowed. And reverse repo rate already you know which is uh, lending or funding against buying and securities with an agreement to resell the said securities on a mutually agreed future date at an agreed price which includes the interest rate for the funds lent. That already we know that that concept, but I was just trying to tell you there are two types of repo market which exist one is repo under LF and another in outside LF market. So, here we are referring to the outside LF whatever repo market we have those markets are exclusively for some specific reasons for uh, which the RBI can uh, always uh, give the advice to the commercial banks to provide the loans. Then we have another market that is called the CBLO market collateralized borrowing and lending obligations. Already you know that in the call money market we do not need any kind of collaterals, but the CBLO market needs some collateral and why the market was developed? The market was developed for the benefit of the entries who have either no access to the interbank call market or have the restricted ac access in terms of ceiling on call borrowing and lending transactions that we have discussed in the previous class. Either they are not allowed to participate or even if they are allowed there are some restrictions in terms of the borrowing and lending. So, because of that the another market we have developed that is called the CBLO market. This was a relatively new market uh, started in January 20th 2003 uh, and here the maturity period range uh, ranging from 1 day to 90 days. 
and it can go up to one year also in certain extent. And uh, these transactions or the trading takes place through CCIL, Clearing Corporation of India Limited, uh, which provides a dealing system uh, through the Indian financial network and uh, also uh, closed user group to the members of the negotiated dealing system. We have a negotiated dealing system where all kind of transactions, uh, money market transactions always takes place. And CCIL provides that platform through which the anybody wants to participate through this CBLO market, they can use that particular platform for their investment in this particular segment. Uh, then we have, uh, you see that uh, this is an obligation, CBLO gives an obligation by the borrower to return the money provided uh, uh, at a specified uh, future date. Uh, it provides the authority to lender to receive the money lent at a specified future date with an option to transfer the authority to another person for value received that is also allowed. It is underlying charge on securities held in custody with uh, CCIL for the amount borrowed or the lent. The CCIL is the responsible of, uh, organization which deals with the CBLO operations in the Indian market. So, CBLO mostly is used to take care of uh, the particular organizations who have the restricted access or have no access to the call money market. So, these are the major three market which are related to the money call money market, but not exactly only they are different in terms of the maturity period, the instruments maturity period and as well as also the, uh, the collaterals which are used to provide this kind of loans. In the call money market, we do not need any collateral. But for CBLO or the term money market, to some extent the one bank needs the collateral to get the loan from the another bank. Please go through this particular uh, references uh, for this particular session. Thank you.